Welcome to part one of a series of videos where we take a look at making this stave into a triple laminate longbow. And it consists of bamboo, pikia, and lemon wood on the belly. It's a square stave at the moment. We've marked out the center line there, the top of the handle, and the bottom of the handle. As I say, it's a square stave at the moment, so we need to get rid of those corners, which is the roughing out process. The first thing we're going to do is mark the top of the stave, which will hopefully give us a center line down the length of the belly of the bow, which will make roughing out that much easier. I'm just using a tape here to mark roughly the center of the stave. This isn't something I do anymore as I've been making bows for an awful long time, but it's something that I really do advise you do if you are making bows for the first time. And once you've completed those marks, you can join up all the dots. Do this down the rest of the stave and it will make your life a lot easier when you're actually doing the roughing out process. When you're going down the sides of the stave you'll find it really helps to know where the centre of the stave is, which meaning you're taking off equal amounts of wood either side of that stave, particularly if you're new to doing roughing out. You may find that you've lost some of the markings on the belly when you've been preparing this stave, so at this point it's a good idea to remark where that handle is on the belly, as that's the first area we're going to be working on. It's important to know where the handle is in this process, so you don't take off too much wood here or there, depending on how you're structuring the bow. As you can see from this end-on view, the stave is still very much a square section. Now to get that classic curved D-section look of an English longbow, we're going to need to work on that belly. I'm going to use a spoke shave to do the majority of the work when we start the roughing out here by taking the corners off the belly section of the bow. If you find the wood picks up, you may need to reverse the direction that you're going with the tool and see if that creates less marks in the material. It's probably easier to see from this close-up of the handle section exactly the shape that I'm achieving by removing those corners with the spoke shave. I'm avoiding going any further than the centre laminate and that line we created on the belly. After that initial work with the spoke shave, you can now see we've got a nice steep curve. I'm going to mirror that as best I can on the opposite corner of the stave. Looking down the end of the stave now that we're done with the spoke shave, you can see that we have achieved that D section shape that we were looking for. So our belly is basically done as far as roughing out is concerned, now it's time to work on the back. I've already done some before working on the belly to get rid of the very sharp edge that you get on bamboo, which trust me, you don't want to be handling whilst doing the rest of this work. You don't have to get rid of the outer layer that you find on bamboo, but getting rid of this sort of outer waxy layer does reveal the bamboo and its nice stripes and colours that you get underneath. I'm starting by using a rasp to just carefully take off that outer layer, and being very careful when I get to the nodes. Those are those sort of raised lumps that join in the structure of the bamboo. Particularly when making an English longbow, we really would recommend leaving the nodes there, otherwise you risk making the backing of the bow weaker. Once you've got the worst off with the rasp, you can start using the file to get rid of those marks. And don't forget, it's not just the flat section of the backing that we're working on here, we want to blend in that corner. So we're making a nice curve, almost mirroring the work that we did on the belly, but with a much shallower depth. Once I finish with the file, I tend to finish things off with the cabinet scraper. It's good at removing any marks that may be left over in the back of the bow. In fact, it often leaves it smooth enough that you don't even need to do any sanding.
On the left is the area where I've got rid of that backing and on the right it's still there. It just shows it really is worth getting rid of that and the finish that you can achieve. And much as we found at the beginning of this process, you may have lost some of the markings of the handle section from the back of the bow, the area that we've been working on. If you take your cue from the side there, you'll see that the markings are still there. So take the opportunity now to remark the handle. We're nearly at the tillering stage and one of the last checks you need to do is your width to depth ratios. Using the calipers here you can see that this stave is still a little bit too deep so I'll need to sort that out before getting it on the tiller. Because we don't have horns on the end of the bows yet, we're going to make some simple grooves straight into the wood. There we can sit our string ready to start tillering. Using a rat tail rasp I'm just making a groove around the end so we can use a bracing cord. The groove for the bracing cord doesn't need to sit at any particular angle. We'll be making a similar groove at the bottom of the bow to allow the bracing cord to sit into these two grooves, which will help us brace the bow more easily. I'll explain more about this bracing method in the second part of this series of videos. Don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified when that comes out. As this is the top of the bow and we'll be using a single loop laid in string, that top loop can come quite far down the bow, so the angle is quite acute. I'd recommend drawing on with a pencil, much as I'm doing here, which will really help you get it accurately cut. Once I've finished with the rat tail rasp, much as before, I'll use a large round file to get rid of any marks and also widen up that gap a bit, ready to fit the string in. When I place the loop of the string on here, you can see why we had to cut that groove at such an acute angle. As the bow becomes more and more braced, it will sit better and better into that slot. Moving on to the bottom limb now, we don't need such an acute angle in this groove as it's going to only accommodate a bowyer's knot. In fact, the angle won't be too far off what we've done with the bracing cord. You may want to do a bit more work with the round file here to make this slot a bit wider to accommodate the knot as it's a slightly beefier part of the string. Well, we're basically ready to get this up onto the tiller, so that's what I'm going to do. So please do like and subscribe and join us for the second part in this series of Making a Longbow.